Hadi Christian. So, we're everyone, I think we're about to start. Uh, so, you Okay. Hello everyone, I'm uh, Guillaume Nibert, PhD student at uh, SNOPAC and uh, Sorbonne University. And today I will talk about Stamara Prover, so which is a model checker used to prove and analyze security protocols in a symbolic model. So first of all, uh, this presentation is uh, licensed under the PC by NCSA uh, uh, license. It is an adapted material of the Tamaran Prover manual created by the Tamaran team, and you can do uh, you you can reproduce and if you want with the, the attribution of uh, for all con con non commercial purposes. So as the uh, outline, I uh, will make a brief uh, a brief summary of uh, Tamaran Prover, and then we will uh, get the grips with the, the tool. This is an open source model checker used for formal verification and analysis of uh, security protocol in the symbolic model. This is uh, also known as the Tolepia uh, symbolic model. And we consider in this model uh, an adversary that is controlling the network uh, that can uh, drop message from uh, the network, can inject message, modify message, uh, but that cannot break uh, the the security of uh, from inside if there is the non-encryption system that encrypt message. The only way to recover an encrypted message is to get the key. It was initially developed at the Information Security Institute at uh, ETH and here are the people from the core team. It is cross-platform, it works on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows with a Windows X system for uh, Linux. It supports falsification and unbounded verification. It supports also the XOR and the DFI Alman exponentiation effect support. And security protocol specification are uh, expressed as implicit writing system. I will explain you what is this. Uh, the analysis of protocols is done with respect to temporal first order properties. There are a lot of logic. We know what. What is the logic behind uh, the the property you will write? And it is possible to export uh, a Tamaran theory. So the theory is a file where you write your model, your adversary uh, specification, and your property, and you can translate it into uh, uh, ProBelief and DeepSeq file format. Tamaran has been uh, used to prove uh, formally the security of TLS 1.3. FG, IK, authentication, and uh, also, uh, amongst the other, uh, the protocol WPA2 using Wi-Fi and dispatch version against the crack exploit. And now, let's go. So, uh, Tamara is a software where you have an input and an output, and the input is composed of three elements your model of your protocol, the specification of the adversary capabilities, and the specification of the protocol property that are expressed as lemma. So for example, for the, the model, you can have an initiator which talks to a responder, and both of them use a trusted key server. And in the end, you have uh, an output with a proof that satisfies properties if the tool terminates. And the proof can be automatically constructed. This includes an arbitrary number of protocol instances running in parallel while taking account the adversary actions and what you have written in the specification of the adversary. There are interactions between the model and the adversary. These interactions are modeled using rules, multi-set providing rules that are medically a label condition system. A rule is composed of a premise, a fact, an action fact, and uh, a set of action facts which represents the action of the execution of the rule and the conclusion. And this, this is a symbolic representation for both the model and the adversary uh, specification using this multi state writing rule. The adversary knowledge, the message that are on the network, the information about uh, freshly generated values. So these values can be nonce, key, and the protocol state. The, the interaction uh, between the model and the adversary 
uh, and we need the update of network message, the generator of new message. And then for the properties, you have two ways to prove uh, um, uh, security properties or other kinds of properties. Today, we will go on the, the way of the proof over the trace of the transition system. So uh, it's very useful when you want to prove secrecy, authentication, injective authentication. But there is also another uh, way to prove some other kind of properties through your observational equivalence. And it is very useful when you want to make statements about unlinkability, cryptographic and distinguishability, and uh, privacy properties. And for the outputs, uh, so what is very uh, good in, in this uh, tool is that it constructs automatically the proof thanks to deduction and equationing, equational reasoning with heuristics. I won't talk in detail about heuristics in this presentation. And when it terminates, you have either a proof of correctness of your lemmas, of your properties, or a counter example which is basically uh, an attack has been found uh, in your uh, in what you claim uh, in terms of the problem of practice. Uh, and sometimes it may not terminate that the correctness of a security protocol is an undecided problem. So you have also an interactive mode uh, where you can explore manually the, the proof states, the attack graphs, and combine this manual inspection with automated modes to avoid, for example, problems that are linked to non-termination. Uh, and you can also uh, have some other ways to minimize uh, the problem related to non-termination. And now we'll uh, go to the first example, which is uh, a simple encrypted communication between two uh, agents. This is uh, from the manual. Um, and basically, Alice is sending a symmetry key, so most of them are given symmetry key. Uh, and Alice sends a symmetry key using the both subject key, and Bob acknowledges um, that it has, uh, he has he received the secret key by sending a hash of the key. Yes. The adversary will consider is a basic Dolegao adversary, so that's a control network, delete, and then register that same message. And also, it can dynamically com compromise private keys and it will be modelized uh, using a multi set of writing rules. And the security property we want to prove is that, from a point of view, K sent to Bob is not compromised. So, R represents an asymmetric encryption function and H hash function. Here is an example of uh, our protocol in the Alice in Bob notation. And now, when you want to write a, a theory, so first of all, you open your favorite editor and you start with keyword theory and the theory names and begin. And then you have some special keywords. So, for example, meetings, meetings have uh, the support of uh, the implementation of what Summer and Tim has done in terms of uh, support of message supports. So, for example, they support hashing, asymmetric encryption. Symmetric encryption, DCL managed pronunciation, uh, XOR, etc. For this protocol, we will use uh, hashing built in and the asymmetric encryption built in message theory. And uh, the hashing uh, built in message theory provides us uh, the H function, which is uh, parity one, and which provides the cryptographic H function. And the asymmetric encryption built in provides us uh, an asymmetric encryption algorithm. Decryption algorithm and uh, a function of parity one, which is a public key corresponding to a private key. And you have this uh, reduction that if you detect something that has been encrypted using uh, the public key of uh, SKE, it is reduced to uh, two pairs. And now, uh, what is multi set to writing rules? So, First of all, rules operate on a system state. It is a, a multi set of facts. Facts are predicates that store the state information. They, they appear on the trace, is something that is true or false. In our that's uh, uh, it is always true when you 
make some statement about some things. And uh, a multi set remote mode, it's a level start, uh, transition system where you have a premise, the execution of the, of the rules, and a conclusion. And in the, in the premise, you have all the facts that represent the state of uh, the system that are in present in, uh, in, the current, uh, in the current state. Then you have the execution, and then you have the conclusion. So the fact uh, in the conclusion are added to the state, and those from the premise are removed. Yeah. Oui? Uh, why are the rules in the Because they could be used to prove other conclusions. Yeah, so you have uh, some specific. Uh, uh, I, sorry, could you repeat? Uh, no, I was just saying that uh, I don't understand why the, the facts from the context are removed from the states. Because naively, I would, I would think that this T could be used to prove other conclusions. Yeah, of course. Uh, and they are removed of the state. and. And you can create another state in the conclusion that state all the terms inside of uh, uh, the fact that are in in the in the previous state, just to store uh, an information for a future state or uh, thing like that. You have also so I will explain you have some special facts that are uh, possible to be uh, infinitely consumed when you want to reuse them. So. Uh, first of all, we need to create a PKI, and it is representing the text to this rule. So you have a rule and the label name of this rule. And as a premise, we have the FR facts, uh, which take uh, the term LTK. So I, LTK represents there are many, um, uh, a long term uh, private key, the private key of corresponding to a specific public key that will be the, uh, which has the conclusion. The seal represents that this key has been is a is a fresh term, and the FR uh, name is a specific specific in fact that there's a fresh key generated name, and it is very useful when you want to generate nodes or keys, and when you have multiple fresh, fresh facts, uh, every uh, every nodes are uh, are different from the set. Yes. What's the difference between FR and fill? Given that both mean fresh. So uh, it's a name. It's a, it's a it represents the name of the uh, fact that denotes uh, a generated name, and this is a term, a variable that you will use uh, when you will uh, encrypt some things using a private key or a public key. So you cannot have directly the seal that decay because it hasn't been generated. The only way to generate it is by the use of this fact. And in the conclusion, you have um, two persistent facts. Uh, so the persistence is denoted with uh, explanation points. LTK, dollar $A, which represents a public name, so it can be any public agents. Uh, and a, a public name is associated with uh, this LTK, which means basically in our uh, meaning that uh, uh, agent A is associated with private key LTK. This is a set for public key, so we use a public key uh, function, which is basically the, the, the result produced, the public key associated with this uh, private key, and the public key is associated with the same agents, which is represented as a public name. So these are some variable prefixes. Still a uh, a variable which is a fresh term, dollar, a public, uh, a public variable. Uh, cross, it's denotes a temporal variable. It would be useful when we uh, reason uh, over the trace and over the properties and message and kind of message. OK. And now we model the adversary. So the adversary is able to get any public key. So this is not an attack, this is completely normal, but we need to model it. Uh, so we have a new rule, which is get PK. We use the, the, the PK fact, which, is, which can be infinitely consumed, uh, to get any public key from any agents, and it will produce 
a new fact which is out of key and uh, which uh, which is a special between fact also out of key uh, uh, so for the out one it's the not part that send a message to the network uh, and it is only uh, it can be only placed in the conclusion of a rule and for the in fact so for example when you receive a message from the unpatched networks it is uh, it is located only on uh, the premise and now we model something that is uh, 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 a, uh, a characteristic of our adversary we consider is that it can uh, dynamically compromise long-term privacy. So this is not basically uh, this is not uh, what a normal WHO adversary is able to do. So we have to write this rule, and and we make basically the almost the same things. So out of LTK will be revealed in the in the untrusted communication network. But we have added also a special fact that is located in the row, which is an action fact. And this fact doesn't appear in state, but only on the trace. And as we make statements and properties over the trace, we will use it uh, to make uh, to make our proof. Yeah. Oui. Yes, you yeah, to see that we have a question from Marco and the chat. Um, I'll let you read it if I understand where well. you don't prove that the protocol is always secure, you are agreed to be secure and are given a tax key. Yes, absolutely. Now we model our protocol. So basically, we have two rules. Uh, yeah, the first rule uh, it, it denotes not, not the name of the of the, of the rule does not, doesn't denote the two clients, it denotes the same client, but at, it, at different steps of the of the protocol. So the first rule is uh, representing the fact that client sends a non-encrypted message that contains the secret key to the trusted communication channel, and we see that it takes generate the, the private keys, private symmetry key, which would be uh, used uh, for, uh, I suppose, uh, 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 private symmetry key, which currently is a, a, a fresh term. It, uh, the client uh, gather the public key of the server and produce in the conclusion something that is client one S and K, and this is for storing that uh, he knows the server identity and and this and the key he has created for the second steps, and it releases uh, the encrypted message through through the untrusted communication network. Then normally the server will get this message, it is represented in the next slide, and in the end the client, which is represented here, there, retrouve the information from the previous states uh, by using the, 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 the previous facts, so this is what your, your questions before, and uh, take the acknowledgement of, uh, um, of the fact that uh, the server has uh, received the, the key from the client and the server has sent back an hash of the key. There is a, another special fact there. This is uh, an action fact which will be used to say that a session key K was set up with the server S. <coughs> this fact will be used for proving uh, the secrecy of uh, the message K. And then we have in the middle uh, of the protocol a rule that is called server one. Server one now its uh, own private key thanks to the third fact. He receives a message, so which is a request uh, from the trusted communication channel, and he will send back uh, this request, uh, which has been uh, decrypted using its own private key and hashed using the hash function, which is public freedom. And now, 
we want to write a security property about uh, the secrecy of the message from the point of view of the clients. And it's done thanks to lemma. So we use a keyword lemma and a, a lemma name. And we write it using a logic. So it's a special kind of logic. It's a special kind of first order logic. And here there is uh, some message which will be used, some terms, some facts that we have written in uh, in our rules uh, that uh, that will be used. K represents the adversary knowledge of uh, any kind of message that is inside the, the K patch. And here it says that it is not possible that. A client has set up a session T with the server S, because so this predicates this um, fact represents uh, something that is a statement from a client. For this message S and K, so this, this variable S and K, S is a server, K is a private key, at time I, and the adversary know the message K at, time, and at, any, at any time J, G, J without having performed a long-term key reveal of the head. So this is not really different to this rule, because currently we, have, we are in a, in a perfectly secure scheme. So if um, it is not possible to, to get uh, an information of the message uh, only with uh, the, the cipher, uh, the only way to, to get the, the right message is to have the key. So f at i that are represented here means that uh, it's, a, it's a predicate symbol that represents a fact that occurs at a specific index of the price or a time point i if you prefer, and predicate can have uh, uh, multiple terms inside. So yeah, some predicates with two terms inside. Uh, it's a kind of a syntactic sugar. And this logic that is here is called Guarded fragments of many sorted first order logic with a sort of time of four time points. And we'll see that the, what is it? So in blue you have the the same uh, lemma using uh, mathematical uh, symbol if you prefer to, to read it. So we'll uh, just after that uh, go deeply in, in the logic. Uh, but before that uh, we just uh, see what is uh, another interesting lemma, the lemma of executability, which is very useful when you first write your model and you want to see if uh, your protocol and your protocol model is doing what you want uh, to do. Uh, what you want. So you, uh, you do that for only one trace and you make a statement that there is one trace in which a session key has been uh, shared between a server and a client, so, and, uh, and no key was revealed uh, at, uh, at, an, at any time. And when the, the theory takes to the end uh, keyword. So, first of all, in, in logic, generally, we, we, we start the logic, uh, uh, maybe in high school or something like that, with propositional logic. Uh, which is also known as propositional calculus, and it studies the proposition in their logical relation, logical connectives. A proposition is a statement that is either true or false, such as it is raining or five plus five is what it said. And the component of a propositional log logic language is a set of primitive symbols, so that these are known as variable or atomic formula or propositional uh, proposition letters, and a set of symbols. Uh, that are called the uh, logical connective and or implies equivalent uh, nodes, bottom, top. Symbols are syntactic structure of a formal language that are used to illustrate this concept or abstractions. A formula, so which is basically uh, our lemma, uh, is a syntactic, syntactic structure composed of a finite sequence of symbols. A formal language is a syntactic structure of 
a compose of uh, a set of finite string of symbols, the dwarf string that can be formula. And syntax is the study of the formal rules that define all logical expressions of consolidate from symbols and logical connections. And soon uh, the, the definition slides. And it is useful, uh, these kind of things, to play full systems uh, which model a language. So you have, for example, the natural deduction systems you can also have simple uh, action systems with your own axiom to, uh, to create both systems. And then you have an extension of the propositional logic, for example, with uh, first order logic, or also known as first order predicates calculus, uh, which adds predicates and two quantifiers. So predicates is a symbol representing a relation or a property. For example, equal is a symbol of the equal AB formula, where A and B are elements from the same interpretation domains, and formulas are C2. Uh, but you can have uh, also another, uh, another symbol, which is uh, equal to A equal. And you have uh, two quantifiers, so for all and uh, integrity. And so then you have the component for uh, first order logic, which is, which is the same of the propositional logic plus predicate symbol and a set of quantifier symbol. And then you have multiple sorts. So it extends our first order logic by allowing variable to have different sorts in different node domains. So here we have public names, nodes, uh, temporal variables. So, for example, session key S, S and K are predicate symbol of the formula S and K, and where S and K are elements from different interpretation domains. And with a sort of time points, refer to temporal logic, this is a bunch of modal logic, I won't go through the details, but temporal logic deals with the concept of time and temporal relation, uh, the necessity and the possibility of predicate to be true again. And now we have almost our uh, uh, logic. So there is something that is called a guarded fragment. So fragment from a long, or from a language is a subset from the original language by applying its uh, syntax restriction. And the guarded logic is a family of first order logic that have the property that all quantified variables are guarded by atom. So for example, this formula is guarded by P. So P of is a plain case. The variable is guarded by this predicate, and in order to have this formula true, uh, this one should be true. And the other is not guarded at all. Uh, for, for, for all its it is not a valid formula. And why it is important to have a guarded logic is that uh, it, it makes the logic decidable and to determine the truth and the falsity of any formula in the logic. And so it is very useful to to determine the truth or the falsity of uh, security uh, lemma or uh, any kind of other property lemma. So now you have uh, all the components that are useful for uh, writing lemma of uh, of uh, any kind of statement you want to to make about uh, about a security protocol. So now uh, we'll. Uh, so we have written some rules, some lemmas, without having proving uh, them. So we do it using uh, Tamarin and, and go on some practice in this network theory course. Uh, if, if you go to the to the manual, uh, the installation part, uh, basically on, on Ubuntu, you just have to install uh, uh, some Component build essential obscure file of Git and then uh, uh, install uh, Homebrew. And then uh, the, the recommended installation is thanks to the, the Brew uh, package manager, which is also uh, available on Mac. And for Windows, uh, we use a, the Windows subsystem for Linux so, and we install it uh, like this. And then after that, uh, you can download the first example uh, that I have shown you, the simple and detailed communication, and which is available on GitHub. Uh, and then open your uh, favorite uh, web browser at uh, localhost uh, port uh, 
3001. So our first example is there. This is every rule that uh, I have uh, I have shown to you. And when I uh, I start Tamarind with uh, this first example, the, I go uh, to uh, a specific interface, uh, which is the interface of Tamarind, and and there is uh, out theory names. So the interface is shown as uh, below. Uh, go back to the presentation. Um, and uh, in this interface, you have uh, some elements. So at the right corner, uh, at the top corner, there are some elements for the UI, uh, so for example, the welcome page, uh, downloading the theory, and partial proof if you have run uh, uh, the prover. Uh, and some graph visualization tables that are very useful uh, because we will be able to a graph of execution of the protocol. And then on the left, uh, most interesting part, uh, the message theory that is uh, representing the adversary actions, the multi set writing rules for the protocol and also some specific uh, uh, part of the adversary. Uh, so for example, the dynamically compromised uh, rules and uh, and uh, so no, no, it's related to the other side. The sources that are used to uh, prove automatically uh, your lemmas and the property. So for this uh, one, you have other properties. Yes. We have the, the secrecy and the honest setup. The honest setup, uh, yeah, let me see for that. All uh, the properties uh, should be valid for all traces. And for the honest setup, we only need one trace that is valid, uh, just to make sure that we have a correct execution of the protocol. So let's go on the message theory part. Uh, it, it is composed of a signature, which is a list of simple function relation equations. For example, you have the equation at the of how uh, it's written equal to x. But what this is a famous solution the beginning of the slide. There are some other functions. So when you receive a message uh, that is composed of a pair of of, uh, of two terms, uh, if you take the function S and D, it will extract the second term of S D, it will extract the first term, uh, the first uh, term. Uh, and uh, then you have construction rules so that describe the adversary applicable functions. And the construction rules that describe the adversary extractable terms from larger terms for functions. Then we have our multi set rewriting rules. So our description of the protocol and some things that are related to uh, the adversary, so the dynamic compromise. And there are two automatically added rules. Uh, they are ISEN and IRESIV, and they offer an interface that stretch your protocol out to an adversary definition. And then you have the source uh, that are uh, indispensable for uh, generating your proof and switching your proof automatically according to uh, some uh, heuristics. So I don't know the details of the heuristics that are used in the internal working of a uh, but we need uh, this source to uh, to to have uh, a correct proof uh, generation. So basically, when you start your uh, Tamarin uh, and you load your theory, there is a pre-computation phase where uh, uh, the premise of all rules are inspected. The premise contains the facts of the current state of the of the rule. Uh, and for each fact, the, there is a pre-computation of the set of the possible source, the possible origin of a fact. The source is a combination of rules, and you can see on the other side, and it leads to the obtainment of a fact. And then you have rows. When you have no more deconstructions, when you have uh, Deconstructions that are complete, sorry. Uh, you will experience uh, 
uh, less likely non-termination problems. And for some rules, Tamara is unable to get the origin of the facts, so it leads to partial deconstructions. Generally, it's, uh, instead of having deconstruction complete, you have partial deconstructions, and this leads to non-termination. So uh, to, uh, to to avoid this kind of phenomena now to uh, to resolve these problems, you have uh, some mitigation such as source lemma, modeling tricks, or autosource. And then when you apply these uh, elements during the computation phase, we will have some resource with partial deconstruction and some refined source with complete deconstructions. And this refined source will be used uh, when uh, you, you want to prove uh, the lemma uh, because you will la less likely uh, experience non-termination problem. So you can see more in the nine, uh, nine chapter of uh, the manual, chapter nine. And now you have, uh, so for example, let's go to virtual source of all source. For this case, there are no partial deconstructions, so apparently you can make the assumption that we won't experience uh, any non-termination problem when we make a proof. And then you can see the source. So there is uh, many cases the, the distinctions uh, that are used to, comp to, uh, to, to compute uh, the, the possible source for a fact, and then that are used for backward uh, search uh, to, uh, to get, uh, to get uh, uh, proof of our elements. You have some graphs there. So when you have uh, a green box, it represents an instance of a specific rule. So here it is an instance of the register PK rule. And you have this, this thing that is called the thing of uh, the, the LTK facts. And you have some rows uh, that represent the origin of a protocol fact, so that can be uh, linear or persistent fact. So for this one, it is a persistent fact as uh, we can consume it infinitely. So for example, you can explore more, uh, more case distinctions. So here you have two green box because uh, this, this, uh, this rules require another uh, instance, uh, which is an instance of the register PK rule. So the rule reveal LTK require an, an instance at least of uh, register rules. We need at least uh, a, a key to, to, to be created to reveal a key. Uh, and then you, you have some other, uh, some other row. So the red arrows uh, represent the steps where the adversary extract value from a message received. And, uh, and, and, uh, the dotted arrow represents ordering cost lines stemming from, from, example, from the current lemma or restriction. So let's go on and try to prove uh, automatically the secrecy claim we make about uh, the message K. And it is done thanks to constant solving. So I'm pretty sure that uh, for, uh, for Tamara, the uh, the constant solving is, is uh, sound and complete. And the idea is to refine the knowledge of, uh, of uh, the property and the protocol. And at the end, we have a lemma which is verified for all case, for a counter example, which represents an attack. So the smart heuristic, um, so the, this is an internal heuristic that has been implemented by Tamara. Uh, and by default, it used that. And uh, the idea, uh, when you want to explore the graph and to, to, uh, to, uh, to prove the, the lemma, uh, you will have some choice. Or you will want to resolve your lemma, so by simplification or by induction. And the smart heuristic uh, is uh, providing an order of the rules. And uh, when you click on auto proof, it will by default select uh, systematically, the first choice provided by the first uh, the, the heuristic. So we'll do uh, uh, the, the the things provided by the heuristic of 
the marin. So we'll click on simplify. And when you click on simplify, you have a there. You will have uh, a state there. So firstly, here is searching for an execution that contains a session key C, S, and K, and a, a K, K action. So the K, K action represents the fact that the other side know uh, the, the secret K. Uh, and the only method to, to acquire this session key uh, facts is by using an instance of the file two points there. Yeah, so uh, the, the adversary reasoning is also represented in the graph at round box there. We have KU, so K, KU, abusively is almost the same. Uh, you can view as the same for this presentation. It represents the adversary knowledge, and he wants to, uh, so this is the reasoning. So currently, we haven't proved that the uh, adversary know uh, K there. Uh, and when you explore the graph, at the end, we, we will have uh, uh, something, we hope, if it's done. So when uh, we click on uh, one multiple times, we have our lemma, which is colored in uh, green. So it's a success. We have a proof that this lemma is verified, it's valid for all trades, and it has been proved by contradiction in the end. Uh, that it is not possible for the adversary to have the key, to know the key, and uh, having uh, and, and having the client that, uh, that make uh, statements of sharing a key between server and case without revealing the, uh, the key. So it's a weak secrecy prop uh, property, but we have something that is uh, valid. And uh, at the right, you have the execution graph of, of our protocol uh, and the adversary resolving uh, there. So now we will deal with uh, partial deconstructions. And it happens a lot of time when you model uh, a more complex protocol uh, uh, than this one. And if we model the Nidam Schroeder low public key protocol in a specific way, we will have uh, non termination problems in, this, in the way of the manual. Uh, basically, it's, uh, you have two, initiate, two uh, agents, an initiator and a responder. The initiator uh, sends a non senai which is secret, uh, but uh, which is encrypted with a public key of R. The responder acknowledges. Uh, of uh, of this uh, nonce and send back uh, another nonce and the initiator uh, send back uh, the, the NR nonce uh, as an acknowledgement for the rest. The adversary to consider is the same and the security uh, property we want to prove is from uh, the point of view of both the initiator and the responder NI and NR are different frequently so the adversary doesn't know them and I and R uh, represent uh, initiator identities and it will be modeled uh, with public names uh, as, as before. So, uh, so it has been written by Simon Mayer uh, and uh, there is a theory, so same as before, but currently we won't use any hash function, so solid of the building hash function. We will reg uh, register a public key. So this time, we have put the fact that uh, the SI can know the public keys in this rule. Uh, it can be done like this. You can separate the rules or put everything in the rules. It's not representing an attack. It's completely normal to get a public key from the trusted uh, channel network. It's, it's reasonable to, to think like that. Then we model the Compromising of uh, long term private key, same as before. We have changed the name of the fact we really um, the label name, but it's represented that uh, the key has been uh, uh, compromised, the private key has been compromised, and our protocol. 
So there is something that is very cool from the Bernard. You can define some message and why you can use this work instead of typing multiple times uh, this long uh, this long expression. Uh, but basically uh, you you create uh, an antenna, you recover a recover uh, public key. You store the state information of the system because you will have multiple state steps uh, for this uh, for this protocol, and you send this message there to the responder. The responder at the first step uh, will re will retrieve this message normally, and we, we are sure that it will uh, receive this message. Uh, we will uh, make some check using uh, what is called the pattern matching. Uh, normally, we are sure because uh, when uh, the responder will do the decryption of this encrypted cipher, he will get something. Otherwise, it is not valid. And we have another message which will be sent to uh, uh, the initiator, so the second phase of the system. And, uh, and and for the for the initiator, so for the middle parts, you have the same until uh, reaching the destination. So the destination which is responsible for right? so you have the three speakers. And we have made some statements on uh, we have written some facts that are secret IR and R secret IR and I, which represent a statement from the point of view of the initiator that I have uh, that's as an initiator I have um, uh, exchange a message NR and message NI secretly, and same things for all uh, responders on the point of view responder NR and NI are secret. Currently, these facts are located in the conclusion, so we need to add another rule to get, uh, which is more, more general. Uh, to get this uh, information on the text that can be on the text. It can be whatever uh, inside the, the agents. It will be for this protocol I and R and R I. And then we have our non secrecy lemma. And that states that it is not possible to have uh, set up a shared secret between I and D, so between R and I, I and R. An adversary knows the secret at any time J. Uh, without uh, revealing uh, uh, the, the key that has uh, that are been created by so the long term key that has been created by uh, initiator and uh, responder. And when we start Tamarin uh, with this protocol, so, uh, with this implementation of the protocol. We see that there are a lot of uh, um, partial deconstruction. So there, there we have twelve partial deconstruction. So if we if we go back to the presentation, I have some to show. Um, uh, when we when we will uh, try to prove the the lemma. Uh, uh, we will have a uh, big problem of non termination uh, because it gets the wrong instance to to, uh, to get uh, information about uh, some message the, the adversary. Uh, here, uh, if we inspect the raw source or so the origin of, uh, of a fact uh, for a specific rule, there is uh, some uh, green. Uh, green um, a row that represent partial deconstructions and more uh, concretely when we want to uh, to prove it so for example uh, in uh, in this lemma we make a simplification and then we want to solve uh, 30 this secret uh, this, um, this secret uh, fact uh, then we want to 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 solve uh, uh, this information, this KU of uh, a message, 
Ayank uh, and something like that. And um, the adversary needs this key to decrypt the message Ni and S. So he will uh, he will uh, he will uh, try to derive any LTK uh, a message thanks to the rule I2, which is done there and do it uh, infinitely. And we, we will uh, not reach termination by that. So maybe it's better explanation there. Um, here we have the output, which is decrypted by the adversary, which is not normally the case because the adversary doesn't have the key. But here it tried to, to, uh, to get the information of uh, of Ni and S, and then again, we want to, to get the key from the output of the previous instance, which is I2, infinitely. And uh, the, the, the problem is that Tamara is unable to get the information that the key doesn't come from the fact I2. And we have to, to make something to tell this information with Tamara. There is two, uh, so in this presentation, there is two possibilities. There are others, if you go to the manual. Uh, firstly, we use a source lemma approach, uh, where we have some action facts. And for example, there, I have added uh, the manual. Two action facts out I, uh, M1, in R, N1, uh, NI. Uh, then out and out and one and then two, which states uh, basically when we write um, the lemma source that um, when when you have this fact, and I was known by the adversary, or a message M1 was sent by the predecessor or the initiator before the time this rule has been uh, has been uh, uh, executed. So this is what is written there. You have two possibilities. So either the adversary knew the message and I at the time that is done before the execution of the rule that contains this uh, fact, or it has been processed correctly and uh, the uh, the the initiator sends correctly the message. The same for uh, an R. And then we have no more uh, refined source. Uh, we have no more deconstruction, uh, partial deconstruction there. So we won't get any uh, any more uh, partial deconstruction and no termination problem. Uh, it's good, but we have to prove that this source lemma is valid for all trees. Also. Otherwise, when we make proof uh, with a wrong source lemma, but that uh, removes completely the uh, partial deconstructions, you may possibly uh, lose uh, some uh, some attacks uh, that could be fined by Tamar. So, uh, I don't have a demo. I have a demo. Maybe seven minutes. Um, well, what about that? So, um, believe me, believe me. If we use uh, this lemma, um, uh, if we use this lemma, so we can prove it automatically by Tamari. This lemma is valid, and then when we want to prove the previous lemma, uh, there is no more. Uh, this kind of construction because uh, there are no more partial deconstruction. There is another method which is uh, called the auto source approach. So, if you, for simple protocol, it is very useful. You don't need to write uh, directly your source lemma, it is written automatically uh, uh, by Tamarin thanks to the work of Sumayer uh, and Veron So basically, when I start Tamarin with the auto source option, it creates this auto lemma source, which is basically the same as uh, what uh, we have written before. 
there are other uh, methods uh, such as uh, modeling tricks and variants. So be careful when you want to run uh, variants or function variants. Uh, we have to be sure that they are okay if you know what it is. And modeling tricks, so you can go to to uh, this uh, URL if you want to uh, more information about uh, dealing with partial deconstruction. You have a lot of resource material on the website, uh, a lot of research paper, paper that you summarize. The user manual is very well written. You can uh, get the briefs also with uh, the, the manual. There is a Google Groups uh, with an active communities um, uh, and uh, also the researcher that work on camera as well by quickly details. It is open source and uh, and that's it. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Yeah, okay. So, uh, so the, the Marcus question was, what what is the gap, strength, drawbacks, difference uh, between Tamarin and Clock? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't work with the same model. So Clock, I'm pretty sure that it did with a computational model and Tamarin with a symbolic model. Uh, Clock is a proof assistant. So you cannot prove automatically. Uh, uh, all, as fast and easy as uh, uh, Tamarin. And uh, you can refine uh, very specifically the adversary uh, capabilities. Uh, you can be in, uh, in uh, other uh, models at the Dolev Yao, where uh, we consider that uh, encryption systems are perfectly secure. Uh, so, yeah, I, I know that Coke is, uh, is, is also used uh, for this kind of, uh, of product. Does it res uh, answer to, the, to your question? I have a question about the Google Group. Yeah. Uh, so is there another question uh, on the bridge? Or in the room? Okay, so let, let's thank you again. Have a good lunch, everybody, and uh, have a nice holidays. Thank you.